Great, so today I'd like to talk just a little bit about the cell membrane and some of the proteins and other molecules that you'll find in that cell membrane. So if we remember the cell membrane, the primary component of this guy um, are phospholipids. So what we'll have is we'll have a series of phospholipids. These guys have their polar heads and their non-polar tails that kind of look a bit like this. Okay. So this will be the inside of the cell, and that will be the outside of the cell. In addition to um, these phospholipids, what you'll find are quite a few molecules of cholesterol. Cholesterol molecules will be positioned between the phospholipids. And what these guys do in orange is that they give the, the cell membrane a little bit more structure and strength. They hold those phospholipids together a little bit more strongly so the cell membrane doesn't fall apart. Okay. In addition, what you'll find in this cell membrane is you might find some carbohydrates on the outer surface. And these carbohydrates, their function is to let other cells identify this particular cell. So this is the outside of the cell membrane and this is the inside. Okay. So these carbohydrates in black, they'll tell the white blood cell, they're like, hey, we're not a problem. We, this cell actually belongs to, um, to the body, so, uh, it, it, so the white blood cell doesn't attack it. One of the main kind of uh, components of the cell membrane are a series of proteins that hang out inside the cell membrane itself. Okay? So here's an example of two proteins. One thing that these proteins might do is they might be enzymes. This is a great way to kind of keep track of where the enzymes are in the cell, is that when you lock them inside that cell membrane itself. In addition, if you have two enzymes side by side, the product of this enzyme can be used by the next enzyme to create a new, a new product or a new uh, chemical. Okay. Also, what you'll find in the cell membrane is you'll find proteins that act like channels. So this could be a protein right here that has a little passageway in it that would allow a certain molecule or chemical to pass through. And aquaporin is just one of these specialized proteins that allow water to, to pass through through osmosis. Another role of some of these transmembrane proteins is to receive a signal which causes a change in the behavior of this cell. So this protein could receive a signal, a chemical signal like a hormone. So a hormone could bind onto this guy, and that would cause this protein to change shape, which could kickstart a chemical reaction on the interior of the cell. Okay. In addition, what you might even find is that um, you'll have proteins in the cell membrane that act as pumps. So this is another way in which a protein can move things from one side of the cell to the other. All right. A famous protein that does this is the sodium potassium um, ATPase. So it uses energy, and um, when it uses this energy, it changes shape and moves sodium and potassium across the membrane. Okay. Finally, these proteins they might actually uh, be used to anchor the cell to either extracellular um, structures or fibers or to another cell itself. These um, when we're talking about uh, proteins that uh, make unions between neighboring cells. These unions come in three different categories. One category are called tight junctions. Tight junctions, and again, this is when two uh, neighboring cells are anchored together. Tight junctions, think of these as a really, um, almost like super glue or a staple, where you have two cells that are stapled together. Um, these tight junctions are typically waterproof and they're impermeable, so things can't sneak between those two cells. You'll find these tight junctions in the epithelium that lines our intestine so that the nasty things in our colon or our large intestine, those bacteria, aren't able to cross over into our body cavity. A second type of uh, union made by proteins is called a desmosome. Desmosomes, think of these guys as uh, proteins that anchor neighboring cells together so they don't pull apart. You'll find this a lot in cardiac muscle cells. So cardiac um, muscle cells are arranged um, kind of in series, 
And when they contract, they pull on each other, and that allows the heart to, to beat, all right? It allows the heart to contract, squeeze the blood out of the, the ventricles and the atria. Um, you obviously don't want those neighboring cardiac muscle cells to pull apart, so we need to anchor them tightly together. That's, that's done with the desmosome. Um, the last type of uh, union that you come across is called a gap junction. This is when you have two neighboring cells, you have proteins that match up on either cell, and it creates a, a little tunnel that connects the cytoplasm from one cell to the next. Okay? These are also found in cardiac muscle cells, and this allows electrical signal to pass freely from one um, cell to its neighbor. Okay? They're not very common in the human body, but we will talk about those a few times in this course. And uh, that's a nice little overview of what's going on in the cell membrane.